your advertising plan, you don't even need to write that in there. Because that's the minimum requirement is to build brand awareness. Now there's other objectives that you might want to achieve, like create a favorable brand attitude, which means you want people to like your brand. Or for people to think that um, your brand is trustworthy. Now in some categories that's very important, like some of the ones that we were talking about with Tylenol, for example. For consumers to perceive your brand as trustworthy is, is important, or that your product is safe. Now for, let's say, for clothes. Well, if people perceive your brand as trustworthy or having a high level of integrity, that's not a bad thing. But if you're spending $50 million on advertising to convince people of that, you may want to rethink. Right? You probably want to convince people that your brand, your product is fashionable, that it's maybe durable, trendy. So it really depends on, on the category. Now there's two levels of brand awareness. One of them is brand recognition and the other is brand recall. And they're different. Brand recognition is when you recognize the logo and symbol for the brand at generally at the point of purchase. And this is the new Pepsi uh, logo here, which is very minimalistic compared to the Pepsi logo that you can see on the vending machine down there. Right? This is just a very like a, almost like an aerial, very narrow font which the font they used for their logo previously was this very thick, kind of like bubble 3D um, font that was all caps. And this is the latest interpretation of their symbol. So the symbol is fairly similar to the prior symbol for Pepsi, but it, this is more of a in interpretation, right? It's still fairly similar. Um, the biggest change was to their logo. Now, why do we care about that? You think, all right, that's okay. Because it has to do with brand recognition, which is the ability to recognize the logo and symbol when you see it. And companies spend millions, and I'm not even exaggerating, well, I say billions of dollars to achieve a high level of brand recognition. That when people, you don't want to admit it, right, but you're in the grocery store and 10 aisles away, out of the corner of your eye, you see this red, white, and blue graphic and you just know, right, none of us want to admit that we're just so brainwashed through advertising that you know that that's the Pepsi logo, that's the Pepsi symbol. And not just for Pepsi, but for, for other brands as well. That's what we mean when we say brand recognition. And when we advertise, we want to make sure to include the logo and the symbol in the ad, whether it's a print ad or a TV commercial, as well as the packaging. Because you want people to recognize it at the point of purchase. So when they see it on the shelf, yep, that's it. They grab it and they put it in the shopping cart. Have you seen the latest commercials for <clears throat> sneakers? Uh, the, the ads for sneakers? No. It's the bar, but anything that's written in it has nothing to do with sneakers. Nothing. <laughs> really? It's the colors and the sign, but nothing to do with sneakers. And the huge on the way to Manhattan, on the way back. They have a billboard? Written, or yes, it's, yes. Okay. Sneakers is written nowhere in the whole. It's just right. Well, that speaks a lot to some companies have a lot of equity in color, in a certain color. Not all companies do, but for Coke, for example, red there's a very strong association. Um, Kodak is what's yellow. yellow. Uh, it's not a requirement. It's not a branding requirement. It's not a brand strategy requirement. But if you could achieve equity in a certain color, it's definitely going to help with the brand recognition, as well as the font that you use for your logo. 
like they very often, like you say, they um, they have ads. It doesn't say Snickers. It says Hungerlicious or something like that, right? <laughs> Using the Snicker right yeah. logo font. Yeah, they do that, and that's impressive. It's scary too. Think about it. Really as consumers and as individuals, when you see that and it doesn't say Snickers, but you know that that's Snickers, even though all it says is hungry. Yeah, hungry, why wait? Or it's just you know. I'm trying to remember some of the uh, some of the phrases that they're using. Right, N nougat, nougat something. Yes. Right. <laughs> yeah, from a branding standpoint, that's very compelling. But to what's even more impressive is to achieve brand recall, which is. Being able for being a, for the consumer to be able to retrieve the brand name from memory, so it's unaided. So you go into a restaurant, you go into Applebee's over here, and they say, "Well, what would you like to drink?" There's no flashcards, right? They're not saying, "Do you want to drink Pepsi? Do you want to drink Mountain Dew? Do you want to drink Snapple?" They say, "Well, what would you like to drink?" Now you have to retrieve from your memory the brand name. Now for us as marketers, as advertisers, we have to advertise, the frequency for the advertising has got to be much greater in order for consumers to be able to remember the brand name. It's a lot easier to recognize the packaging on the shelf when you see it. You saw it in the, in the uh, print ad, you saw it in the TV commercial, several times, right, because one of the key components of advertising is frequency and also reach, the ability to um, effectively communicate to your, uh, your target audience. But uh, frequency is a, also an important advertising component, which the general rule of thumb is at least six to eight times. You have to have six to eight exposures in order for people to process the information in the ad. So if we had to decide between reaching 200 million people one time or reaching 20,000 people eight times, it would actually be better to reach 20,000 people eight times. Do you follow that? So the people, it's, it's like so cool for our ego as business people to say, I ran an ad during the Super Bowl, you know, 200 people saw my, my commercial. Well, yeah, that's, that's kind, it is kind of cool, but they saw it one time. And that's not enough for, for new brands. Now, if it's already an existing brand like Coke, it makes a lot of sense because they already have a high level of awareness. This is just what we call reminder advertising. But if you if you introduce a new a new brand, it'd be rather better to reach twenty thousand people eight times because those twenty thousand people who saw the ad, they got it, right? They they processed it. Whereas people watching the Super Bowl, they saw your ad one time, and that's it. And not to mention that they saw twenty other commercials too, right? And a typical ad is only um, 30 seconds, right? A 30-second spot. That's not very long at all. Some of them are like a minute, but that's very unusual because television advertising is very expensive. The rationale is that you could reach a lot of people. Now, during the Super Bowl, that's an exception, that you have that high level of viewership where you could actually reach 197 million people like this um, past Super Bowl. But still, you could still reach millions of people um, during prime time, even though it's, it's not the Super Bowl. We have to ask ourselves, this is a strategic decision, whether or not um, that's in alignment with our brand. Does that make sense for our brand? Does our brand have um, mass appeal because our target market 